up, bud? Oh. <laughs> so you were disappointed in, in the cage, but obviously that was a pretty dominant performance, just not, maybe not flashy, but there's nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, I mean, I, I, just, I guess it's how you look at it, you know? Uh, you can't throw a fly knee in your pro debut and then go out there. I didn't want to go out there and, and, and lay on a guy and hug him, you know? So um, I just kind of reacted to the crowd a little bit. If I, if I felt they were getting anxious, I, you know, I postured up and started to throw some, some big elbows. But at the same time, you know, this is a guy that uh, I had to press the action, you know, he, he stood back and he wanted to throw wild punches and, you know, so I, I just felt like it was best for me to take him down. Uh, but overall, you know, I, I've been looking at my phone and everybody's like, dude, you look so mad. And I'm like, man, I tried to fly into this fool and he just disappeared out the way. So, you know, uh, I'm always looking for a highlight finish and I want to entertain the fans, man. I don't want to you know, be a guy that wins by TKO or, or be a guy that, you know, I've got to kind of play off the crowd. I'm looking for action and I, and I want it all the time. So, yeah, I was a little disappointed in myself tonight, but, um, you know, it's it's my second pro fight, so. That's what I was going to say. I think it's admirable, comes. it's admirable that you're this hard on yourself two fights in, but you are just two fights in. I mean, take it easy on yourself a little bit maybe, right? When I started my MMA career two years ago, I trained with the best guys in the world, man. And so there's no, with me, there's no taking it easy on myself. I'm going to be my harshest critic. And like I said, I, I wanted to stand up. I wanted to get the knockout tonight, you know. I, the way I look at it, I'm, I'm the main event all the time. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to come here and be like, oh, let me watch Liam McGeary fight, or let me watch, you know, Campos fight, or Matt Mitrione, like, you know, I want everybody to, to love me and, 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 you know, to cheer for me, so with that being said, I got to go out there and I'm always looking for a big finish, a big move, and, you know, I, I want to impress the fans, it's just how I am, it's, it's how I'm built, and, you know, it's, it's just how I'm going to continue to be my entire career. Do you take fact, though, at least, that you didn't fight stupid? Like, you didn't go out there, try to force the fly knee, try to, you know, force a spin kick. But every, after a while, you're going, okay, he's going to give me this, so I'm going to take advantage of this. I think naturally, instinctively, because I was trained so well by Neil Melanson, that sometimes I just resort to being like, I can beat this guy this way, and, you know, I'm going to beat him this way. But on the inside of me, you know, I'm a guy, like I said, you know, I'm a guy that wants to entertain the fans. I want the Holy War. So with that being said, I can never be satisfied with taking somebody down and beating them up because I've been doing that for the last 13 years of my life in bar fights. So, you know, I can't be satisfied with that. I want the big finish. I want the big win. So, you know, it's just how I'm building. It's just how I want to continue to be. Are you happy with Bellator? I mean, we, we had you on before you made your pro debut. You couldn't tell us on the show, last call, you were signing. First fight out, they show your highlights. Second fight out, you're on the main card. Are you happy right now with the deal that they've given you? It's the best organization in the world. I'm happy with Bellator. There's no, there's no, there's no other place I'd rather be. That's for sure. What would you like to get back in that? Dude, I didn't get punched, so I'll fight next <laughs> week if you want me to. You know, I don't care. Whoever they give me, you know, whenever it arises, I'll fight again. I want to fight five times this year. So with that being said, let's, you know, let's do it as soon as possible. You know, I'm going to hit up Mike. Mike, I'm going to hit you up. And, you know, you just let me know when you want me to get back in the cage and we'll, and we'll get it done. 2017 was your breakthrough year. People know who you are now. Uh, this is your first fight this year. What do you think 2018 has in score my goal, my personal goal is to fight five times this year and win five times this year. And it doesn't matter who it's against and it doesn't matter if, it matter if it's like my level of, you know, the guy 3-0 and or a guy 4-0 or, or if I'm fighting a guy like Pitbull, you know, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm going to fight five times this year. I'm going to win five times this year. And, you know, I want to put on the show every single time that I go out there. It's just it's who I am as a person. You know, I love the, I love you know, the support that you get. Even if it's like, oh man, they're bandwagon fans, it doesn't matter. You know, I love the attention. So with that being said, I want to fight as much as possible. I want to put on a show for the people and I want to show them that, hey, Bellator is here and, and I'm going to be the king of the featherweight division. It's that simple. Did you happen to see Mike Kimball's fight a few fights before you came out? 
The slam. No. Slam with, the, with, the, with the arm bar? Yeah. I did see that fight. You saw that? Yeah, so absolutely. I, so I, it seems like it's a similar situation to yours. I mean, the kid was making his pro debut and kind of started to go viral a little bit. People are talking about it. If you had a chance to, to talk to him, what would you say to him about what he can, can take from, from a moment like that? Live in the moment, dude. That's all I can say. You know what I mean? You know, I can tell him, hey, don't put too much pressure on yourself the next fight. But then I'd be a hypocrite because I'm the type of person that I want to top myself every time. I'm not, I'm not chasing anybody in this division. Who the hell is a champion in this division? I couldn't tell you. You know what I mean? There ain't no superstars. There ain't no Conor McGregor. It's me. You know, so with that being said, you know, I would just say, you know, hey, man, go out there and do your thing the next fight. You know, try to fight how you want to fight, how you want to win it, and, and, and move on from there. You know, that's, only, that's probably the only advice that I could give them. So knowing your confidence, do you start targeting guys for your next fight like a Henry Corrales, you know, somebody who's yeah. a, a guy at top five, top ten level. Do you start, or do you go even higher? Maybe a, a pit bull right off the bat. The money's right off like pit bull. It's not a problem. I've sparred with guys like Robert Van Roseman. You know, once when I started training, you know, I've, I've fought guys like Desmond Green. You know, UFC caliber guys. You know, Jason Jackson. You, I can. The names can go on forever. Yep. Jordan Parsons, Juan Bellator. The names can go on forever. You know, so there's no one that intimidates me, that scares me. Like, come on, man, I've seen it all. You know what I mean? I, I went into the Black Zillies with just a wrestling background. You know, and I, and I stood there toe to toe with those guys. I never quit. I've seen guys leave and quit. You know, I never quit. You know, being knocked out in practice a couple of times never deterred me. There was days that I, I woke up and I was like, fuck, man, it's Tuesday. Like, I got to go in there and spar. You know what I mean? Like, I've been in situations where I've been afraid to go into practice the next day and compete. You know, so you, you throw the guy's name out, oh, he's the champion of this. I don't care. You know, I, I want to go out there and put on a show. It's, it is what it is, you know. I'm going to win and you're going to win, but, you know, in my mind, I, I think I'm unbeatable. So, with that being said, it doesn't matter who it is. Bring them on. I'm ready to fight. I don't care. You saw it tonight. You know, you saw my first fight. Yeah. What's up, Matt? That's my boy. What's up, Matt? I'm really proud. Great job. Thank you, bro. I love you. That's my boy. Always kept me up when I was at the Black Zillions and feeling down, you know. But, like I said, you throw a guy in front of me, I don't care. You saw the first fight. You know, the guy wanted to stand because he thought, oh, my God, his wrestling is good, and I fly and eat him and knock him out. The second guy that I just fought, he wanted to stand back and didn't want to get hit with a flying knee. So I took you down and I elbowed you into my, you know, my arm swelled and they stopped the fight. So I can beat you any way that I want to beat you and that's just how I feel at 145. I'm too strong, I'm too fast, you know, I'm too technical, I have too many skills. You know, if you put me in the 170 pound, 170 pound division then it might be a fair fight, but I can't see anybody at 145 that's going to even test me, you know. Just being honest, man. We appreciate your honesty. Okay. Uh, Tyler, so let's put that the other way. You've talked about your skills. Obviously, you flashed great stand-up today. You showed an unbelievable ground and pound. You're an accomplished wrestler. Um, you, know, you talked about not being intimidated by everybody. But how about we flip that the other way? Now, if you're a young fighter and you're a quality fighter and you see someone like you, I mean, you think it would be hard for Belter to find you an opponent? You know, uh, I don't think it would be that hard because most people in the fight game think that they're tough. You know, you, most people in the fight game, they don't work a nine to five for a reason. You know what I mean? Like they want to be their own boss. They want to be in control of their own destiny. They think that they're their own man. You know what I mean? So with, with that being said, there's going to be some guys out there that's like, I don't care if he can wrestle. So what are you going to fly me? I'm like, I'll fight him. I'll beat him. And then I'm going to beat him however I want to beat him, you know? But ego's a hell of a drug. You know, and fighters have egos, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a certain kind of guy you want? Because so far you faced a guy who was afraid of you tonight and a guy who was a, mostly a stand-up fighter. Do you want maybe like a, a jiu-jitsu guy next or more of a wrestler, somebody who 
when you're ready for the pit bulls or go up in a weight class, maybe fight Michael Chandler down the road, you're ready for that style. You're ready for any tricks they might throw in a real live firefight. I'm a guy that, there's no other way to put it, but I'm, I'm the brighter the lights and the better the competition, the better I am. Care who I fight? It's a fight, man. You know, and that's what it comes down to. It's a fist fight. You know, you can have all the technique in the world and not have any heart, and you don't win the fight. It's a fight. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if he's a jiu-jitsu guy, or he's a kickboxing guy, or he's a wrestler. You hit me, I'm gonna hit you back harder. You punch me in the face, I'm gonna stab you. You stab me, I'm gonna shoot you. You know, that's just how I am. So. It doesn't matter who the guy is, you know. Whatever you try to do to me, I'm going to one-up you. It's that simple. Cool. Thanks, right. Tweety.